Star Wars is about lots of different themes. On one level, it's about the life of a hero and his evolution from a farm boy up to a Jedi Knight. But on the other hand, Star Wars is full of big political statements about the nature of politics, republic, democracy, empire, and dictatorship. George Lucas himself always said that the figure of Emperor Palpatine, who takes command of the Republic and then the Empire, was based on Richard Nixon. But the story of the Republic in Star Wars is really also based on the story of the historical Roman Republic and the growth of the dictatorship of the Caesars uh, in ancient Rome. The ancient Roman iconography is also uh, made much more clear by the use of Roman names like Palpatine to indicate the nature of the democracy itself and the councillors. Democracy is not shown uh, in a very positive light at all. So in one way, while Star Wars really doesn't like the nature of dictatorship, so it doesn't like the Emperor, it doesn't like Darth Vader, it doesn't like all of those pseudo-Nazi elements of dictatorship, it's also not that keen on democracy. Whenever a politician, a democratic politician is shown, they are usually venal, corrupt, self-serving, and not really in it for the best interests of the Republic at all. Lucas really uses the example of the Roman Republic and Richard Nixon in a much later example to show how democracy, in a way, kills itself. So it isn't some external power that comes in and flattens democracy. The Democrats, the politicians themselves, overturn democracy in their own interests, in their own personal self-interest. And it's from this that the Emperor emerges, and consequently Darth Vader, who gets corrupted by a part of the Force and turned over to the dark side. Lucas' ambivalence towards democracy is also taken up when he starts talking about the rebel movement. If you think about the rebel movement and who makes it, makes it up, this isn't some sort of mass movement of the people against the wealthy. It's really an elite revolt. After all, if you think about it, the rebellion itself is led by a princess. And what Lucas is really showing here is that dictatorship is bad, democracy can also be bad if we don't get involved. But on another level, he's also saying that what people really want is to be told what to do. They just actually want to be told what to do by the right people, not the wrong people. Um, there's an echo of George Lucas' view of uh, the Star Wars uh, Rebel Alliance in real rebellions uh, in the real world. So if you look at many rebel groups around the world, in Africa and South Asia, the kinds of groups that I look at, whilst lots of the foot soldiers may be the poor and the disenfranchised, actually the leadership tends also to come from elites and elite classes. So the Maoist rebels in Nepal, for example, were led by people who were Brahmins. Uh, these are not downtrodden people who don't have access to education or government or a voice. These are people who use their voice to lead a revolution itself. And actually the idea of the Rebel Alliance is not so far removed from reality as you might think. 